For those who aren't familiar with Avantor, which came public about a year or so ago, am I correct on that? Yeah, we went public uh, in May of, uh, of last year, and it's been uh, a pretty exciting ride since then. I, I am sure it has been, and, and you're trading ahead of where you were then. Not all IPOs can say that, obviously. For those who don't know the company, what do you do in the supply chain? What do you supply that makes your company so important to the therapeutics and the vaccines that we're going to uh, benefit from? Yeah, Tyler, thanks for giving us the opportunity to highlight what we do. We are uh, really proud of the role that we're playing in, the, in this uh, pandemic. We're going to be providing mission-critical products uh, uh, all along the, the value chain here to support uh, workflows like testing, uh, as well as vaccine development and, and therapy development. And then ultimately, we're going to be providing ingredients uh, that are used in the production of these, uh, of these vaccines. So uh, give me an example without going too technical on, on a product that is critical to either the Moderna vaccine or the Pfizer vaccine. Is it a solution, a suspension? Uh, what is it that, that I can wrap my head around? Yeah, so um, relative to like the mRNA technology, which underpins both the uh, Pfizer and the Moderna uh, vaccines, I think we've all become experts in, uh, in that workflow. Uh, and perhaps you've heard of things like uh, uh, lipid nanoparticles. Mm -hmm. uh, of which there are several that are important in delivering, uh, you know, that vaccine uh, into our bodies. And uh, we would be a producer of uh, some of those lipids. I see. I see. So it's a highly, highly technical area. I, did I see in my notes that you have something like six million different products? Is that how can that be? <laughs> we do. We have a very broad portfolio and, uh, you know, it allows us to support our customers all the way from early phase uh, R&D and in, uh, in process discovery and development all the way through to uh, full-scale manufacturing. We're going to be deeply embedded uh, with our customers every step of the way, um, and, and not just for, for COVID. Uh, we're going to be supplying ingredients and products uh, to most of the biologic uh, therapies that are approved in, uh, in the market today. So, Michael, tell us about how the rollout of the vaccine has been going and the production of it. Uh, from where you sit, uh, have there been any any hairballs in the process? What's happening? Yeah, so as you can imagine, this process got underway uh, early in the spring. Uh, actually, we've all been planning for for this day, and obviously, we're thrilled that the sight of trucks finally rolling out of uh, factories with vaccines that are being distributed. Uh, but we've all been planning for this day uh, from the very beginning, uh, and it takes a lot of collaboration, as you can imagine. Uh, given how dynamic uh, the situation has been. Uh, we've been, uh, you know, providing materials. Our, our model requires that we customize these materials, uh, you know, to be able to, you know, provide the functionality that our, our customers' platforms require. And so we've been working with our customers really since the early spring. Uh, we stood up a supply chain control tower very early on to identify, um, you know, potential bottlenecks in the supply chain, whether they be raw materials or, uh, manufacturing capacity or labor constraints and have been you know, working steadily uh, to eliminate any of those constraints. And so uh, most of our materials would have, uh, you know, significant lead times to them. Mm -hmm. So for the vaccines that are rolling out today, uh, we were probably producing those materials um, over the last several months. Mm -hmm. um, and had those in the hands of our of our customers as they were starting to ramp so let me, uh, their production. I, I assume your customers, when you speak to your customers, you're talking about large pharmaceutical companies. Maybe there are others that I that that you would identify here. But but I've got to imagine that you, as a a component manufacturer and a manufacturer, you're making stuff, not knowing whether the drug is going to work or not. So how how big a risk is it? And, and certainly the others were doing the same. They were manufacturing product uh, in anticipation of approval. So there's a risk there, right? Yeah, there certainly has been risk uh, all along the way here. The, all the development work was obviously being done at risk. But um, given the lead times of some of our materials and the customized nature of what we do, you know, our customers who, as you mentioned, you know, are the, uh, the pharmaceutical companies that are making these vaccines, you know, started placing orders for these, um, you know, going back well into the third quarter. Uh, and those those orders, just given the customized nature of that, uh, you know, we're going to be delivered and produced, uh, you know, regardless of the outcome here. And so what, now that we have a couple of vaccines that are approved, what that really now, now brings is certainty. Uh, and we can all mm -hmm. plan a little bit better in terms of what mm -hmm. the forward production plans and ordering will look like so that we can arrange our supply chains accordingly. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.